coffee. Right, before we get into this, as usual, remember, 5th of June, not 7th of June, 5th of June, Wednesday, 7 p.m. in Harborn, free weight loss event, um, how to improve your relationship with food and never go on a diet again. Uh, totally free to attend, 20 space available. If you want to come along, all you need to do is click the link above or click the link below, depending on where you're watching this, and you can register your free place. Like I said, we're only looking for 20 people. What I'm going to cover off in this session is, um, again, just quite simply that really, just how to improve your relationship with food, how to think about food differently. Um, so many people I know are controlled by food, scared of food, worried about food, uh, obsessed with diets, and you know we need to we need to move away from that to help people's both physical and mental health. So if you think this session will be a benefit to you, or you know anybody that it will be of benefit to, please like this video, share this video, or drop a comment down below. Thank you. Right. So what we're going to talk about today is an interesting stat that I saw last week about the percentage of overweight. Uh, sorry, what percentage of overweight parents had overweight kids, particularly mothers? So basically, if you had got an overweight mother, ha what percentage of the children were likely to be overweight? So in the case, in that case, so um, I remember being at school and I was overweight, but I wasn't sort of obese. So when I was at school, there was probably out of 150 kids, five obese kids in my year at school um, compared to... Nowadays, I think it's one in four class obese. So you can see the difference there. So basically, that's a lot. Um, and we, we, we know kind of the reasons why. I mean, when I was growing up, you know, we had to go and play outside. We didn't get our first proper games console until we were 14. There was no phones, no laptops, no tablets, no, you know, tech TV was crap. Um, apart from about an hour and a half, uh, if that, for, for children, uh, children's TV in the afternoons. So things have changed. The environment's changed. We have to accept that. Um, and unfortunately, we have to take personal responsibility to try and combat that, really, because we can't change the environment. We can change ourselves. So, But basically, it was something like 40%, nearly 40% of um, children that had overweight mothers were more likely to be were over, over, obese or overweight themselves so so 40 percent so and, and i think if the parents weren't obese and the mother wasn't obese particularly um there was something like 15 percent. so there's a big difference there's like a 25 percent difference in um in the numbers and it, it just goes to show wh how important it is to set an example because life is difficult and it's hard and when the problem is, and going back to the point about environment, is that what's happening is because it's easier to sell and market products now and food, a lot of food in the supermarket is a product. It's not really food. It's not really like real food, like fruit, vegetables, meat, nuts, whole grains, this sort of stuff. It's processed stuff. It's easy to make products or food like products that appeal to the busy nature of us all uh, and how hard our lives are uh, and how difficult things are nowadays. Um and I don't mean it's a bad time to be alive. It's certainly not. But it's, people are busier. People are more distracted. Um, so it's important to think about the environment, but also think about the example that you're setting. So, of course, I'm going to be a father in July. Um, I'm quite fortunate in the sense that, you know, if I'd have had a kid when I was 28, when I was smoking 20 a day and fat... I perhaps wouldn't have been setting the right example. Whereas now I feel I'm in a position to be able to set a good example. Again, I'm not expecting it to be easy. No way, no, nowhere near easy or even perfect. And I won't make all the right decisions all the time. But I think setting an example is is something we can all do. Um, and I think two things need to happen there. Number one, like I said, we need to take personal responsibility for what we do. Um, we need to accept the environment as it is. We can't change it. We can't blame or point fingers. It is what it is. There is more junk food. There is more fast food. There is more food like products. And we just need to be smarter if we're going to be healthier as creatures. And um, it's not easy. And it's not easy for me. It's not easy for anybody else. Um, so we have to, you know, combat that. And secondly, we have to understand that when a, when a child is young, they don't have much choice of what they do. So they just go with what's given to them. So if we're not, you know, when we give them sweet stuff or when we get them hooked on sweet stuff, or when we use sweet stuff as a reward or anything like that consistently, it does create behavioral patterns. I unfortunately didn't grow up around health. Uh, my parents were not massively unhealthy, but I remember my mom being on quite a few diets and stuff when we were growing up. And, you know, that stuff not can knock on, have a knock on effect. So, 
whilst again this isn't about being perfect it's about just understanding that you know th there is a real chance that if you let yourself go that and you've got children they will follow that example and particularly if you've got teen young girls with that with this pressure now for, for you know for, to, to be body conscious and all this sort of stuff the last thing that you want is them to be overweight because I can imagine it was bad enough for me being a fat teenager, but for being a girl with all the pressure on them and all the influences, again, going back to the environment, must be very, very difficult. So just be aware of that when you make the decisions. But first and foremost, it's important that we take responsibility for our own actions because we can't change the environment. So we have to be smarter. We have to be cleverer. Not perfect, but we just have to be more aware of what we're doing. And awareness is one of the cornerstones of how to improve your relationship with food, which, again, is what I'm going to be covering off on the 5th of June at 7pm in Harbour. So if you do want to grab a spot to that free seminar where I'll teach you about a little bit about food awareness and how to uh, approach it in a better way, just click the link above, click the link below um, and uh, get yourself registered for a free place and you can be introduced to the work that I do. Again, if you want to chat with me personally about how I can help you, maybe personally coaching you or whatever, or, or the boot camp, if you're a woman over the age of 40, again, get in touch via the page. And if you do think that this is going to benefit anybody else, please drop a like, comment or a share. That would be much appreciated. Have a good day.